From our studios in Olympia, Washington, TCTV presents South Sound Seniors, news and views featuring the people, places, and events that impact our growing senior community here in the South Sound region. Our program is presented as a community service to inform and involve you and yours in the lives of older adults. Your host for South Sound Seniors is the Executive Director of Senior Services for South Sound, Eileen McKenzie Sullivan. Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about the older adults in our community. I'm so glad you can be with us this month. I think you're really going to enjoy the show, get a lot of good information, but we've got some real visual treats for you too. Every other month, South Sound Seniors partners with the Senior Action Network to bring you some important information from the members of SAN. And I'm really excited. My guest today is Michelle Penberthy. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Michelle, you are the business owner of not one, but two businesses. One wasn't enough. You had to have two. <laughs> That's correct. So yes. it's MCP and bookkeeping. Yes. And then senior guardianship services. Correct. Yes. And you're here on behalf of SAN to kind of help us. What do seniors need to do to put their house in order? Exactly. Um, so many times working with seniors all the time, I come upon seniors had they thought about it and prepared ahead of time, their lives could be so much easier. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is making sure they, their will is current, or even if they have a will, many of them don't. And do they have a power of attorney? And if they do have a power of attorney, is the person that they delegated st still living? Yeah. Still have capacity themselves? Right. And um, it's important to have a power of attorney that's nearby. Uh, because sometimes if you get really sick and the doctor needs to work with the power of attorney and they live in another state, mm -hmm. then it doesn't work so well. Yeah, that's hard. So, that's wow. the kinds of things and healthcare directives and pulse forms and all the kinds of things that people will need, mm -hmm. you know, to be taken care of. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So some of those are kind of confusing to wills I think people know about, but Talk about the power of attorney and what that is. And well, nowadays they're they're primarily a durable power of attorney, and and by durable it means that that power of attorney stays in effect regardless of that person's ability. Mm -hmm. And more and more of the clients I'm power of attorney for, I request that their power of attorney become effective immediately, even though it may sit in my locked file cabinet for a year, mm -hmm. but I've had um, circumstances where people get sick at three o'clock in the morning on a Friday night, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the old powers of attorney didn't spring into action until their physician wrote a letter. Oh. And sometimes on one, I had the physician was on vacation. Oh no. So it was, fortunately, the, both ERs at both hospitals pretty well know me, so uh -huh. if I say I'm power of attorney and bring them a copy, they'll, they're right. pretty good about it. But at any rate, I asked for them to become effective immediately and then they can uh, mm -hmm. uh, be there whenever they are. Yeah. I also like to work with people that I'm power of attorney for to go to their home, find out what medications they're on, find mm -hmm. out where they keep their keys to the safe deposit box, where they keep their checkbooks, mm -hmm. what they want done with Puffy or <laughs> right. Fido, you know, because if they uh -huh. get sick, I've got to arrange for their pets as uh -huh. well. Yeah. So, um, and then the difference, there's a, you can have a power of attorney for financial mm -hmm. and or a power of attorney for health care. It doesn't have to be the same it person. It doesn't have to be the same person. Mm -hmm. And it, it, some powers of attorney can include both. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're independent powers of attorney. Mm -hmm. And then there's the health care directive, mm -hmm. which is important nowadays because it gives the physician and doctor's offices and people like me, a power of attorney, mm -hmm. um, the information I need to make the right choices for my client. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So your one of your businesses, Senior Guardianship Correct. Services, that's another whole level of um, oversight and care Protection. that you give to somebody. Yes. Talk a little bit about what guardianship is and how that's different from the power of attorney, durable power of attorney. Okay, guardianships are brought about, but it's a legal, it's a legal um, 
service that is put in place by the courts, and this is for people who did not put their house in order, who do not have a power of attorney, but they no, no longer have capacity to make decisions for themselves mm -hmm. that are in their best interest. So the court might step in, or even a neighbor might notice that Mrs. Smith next door is outside watering her plants with no clothes on. Mm -hmm. And people laugh, but I actually pulled up to a house and I found so. my lady watering all of her shrubs in her birthday suit. Uh -huh. But those are the kind of people then that the state will step in and you need to petition the court and uh, file for a guardianship. Mm -hmm. And a guardianship it is a legal process. It's expensive. You have to have attorneys involved. Mm -hmm. And the person under guardianship loses a lot of their rights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they lose the right to drive sometimes, make contracts. Um, m most of the time they can retain their ability to vote, but a lot of them don't even know what voting is. By that point, yeah. Yeah. And, and, a, and a guardianship supersedes any powers of attorney. Uh -huh. um, these people may have had a power of attorney and the person they designated is deceased themselves or their spouse who's no longer here. Uh -huh. So um, one of my pieces of advice to everybody is with wills or powers of attorney or any of it, to revisit it uh -huh. every, every five years or so to yeah. make sure it's what you want. Right. And would you give any advice to our viewers about when they're considering who to ask if, if they're not going to go with a professional um, power of attorney or say a guardian, designating a guardian, what kind of things should they be asking themselves about? Who should I well, ask? Absolutely somebody they can trust. Mm -hmm. um, that power of attorney, most of them, uh, they become you. Mm -hmm. They can access your bank accounts. They can access anything you can access. Mm -hmm. And so you want to definitely make sure it's somebody you can trust. Now, for me, as a professional, I'm licensed. I'm bonded. I've had background checks. Mm -hmm. um, I have liability insurance. So Not to mention a great reputation in the community uh, uh, for thank years you. and years. Years and years. I've been in business 32 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. But that's one of the first things. Then they need to make sure that that power of attorney is ready to maybe get up at 3.30 in the morning and go to the hospital if that's what they need to do? Uh -huh. Are they ready to take over taking care of Fido if, if that needs to happen? Uh -huh. um, you know, sometimes they'll say, sure, I'll be your power of attorney, but they don't realize necessarily what realize it what it can yeah. mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. and, and for a lot of people, if they are really sick, that power of attorney may have to go a step forward further and try pl find placement for them. That find out the, all their assets. That's going to be my next question because yes. a lot of times I know with folks that need more care, you have to do that. You have to be that person for your clients that's yes. making that decision. So how do you go about differentiating between the different residential options for people? It depends on their levels of care. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, uh, for skilled nursing, a skilled nursing facility is a nursing home. Mm -hmm. That is where they need skilled s services such as IVs. They need an RN or an LPN on duty 24 hours a day. Uh -huh. So a lot of times people go to there from the hospital. Then there's the congregate care or the... Um, the, the level of care where they can just convalesce. Uh -huh. You know, they m maybe can't take care of themselves at home anymore, but they don't necessarily need skilled needs. Mm -hmm. Many of our nursing homes are both a skilled facility as well as a convalescent facility. Uh -huh. There's assisted living. Assisted living, they can be pretty independent, but maybe they get their medications handled mm -hmm. for them. Maybe they get help with showers. Uh -huh. There are adult family homes, and these are homes where the family is licensed by the state to take in residents and provide care in their home for them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are memory care facilities um, where people with me uh, your dementias Alzheimer's. like Alzheimer's, uh -huh. um, where they may wander. These are generally secure facilities. Secure means locked, mm -hmm. a locked facility. The people can go outside, but oftentimes any door they go in, they're right back in right. the facility. Uh -huh. So yes, I have to determine their level of care and then find placement. Uh -huh. 
Wow, so. that's a big responsibility. Isn't it is. It? Yeah. it is. And and sometimes they don't believe they need the help that they truly need. Right. So you have to be very creative. Yeah. <laughs> very creative. <laughs> Your acting background comes My in acti handy. It definitely <laughs> does. Oh, goodness. My favorite example was a woman who was living in her home by herself, and she could not be there anymore. So I made an appointment at Garden Court to get her hair done. Oh. So we took her to get her hair <laughs> done, <laughs> and, and then she got to stay for lunch. Okay. <laughs> and now she's still there, and that was two years ago. <laughs> That's so good. you do what you have to, to do. do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so payment for guardianship services or and or power of attorney if you have a power of attorney that you're paying um, is probably expenses but so are living in these facilities very much so very so much. I think a lot of people just think oh Medicare is going to take care of me when I get older mm -hmm. so can you speak a little bit to that yes Medicare does not pay for long-term care at all except with the exception if you have three days in the hospital for a specific ailment or injury, like a broken hip or something, they may pay with a limit of up to 100 days for skilled care following that hospitalization. But that's then they end. Mm -hmm. So um, Medicaid then can pick up. Uh, Medicaid is welfare, mm -hmm. and for, you know there's criterion that people have to meet. Um, the thing that I really talk about a lot with people is eligibility for Medicaid because for a single person they have to be down to two thousand mm -hmm. dollars in order to even apply mm -hmm. and they can't have gifted their money away within the, the last five, five years, years. Yeah. yeah the state will look back and they're penalized if they've gifted money away uh -huh. and so there are rules the other difficult thing more and more of your facilities not your nursing homes necessarily, mm -hmm. but assisted living and memory care facilities, mm -hmm. adult family homes, they won't accept Medicaid clients off the street. You have mm -hmm. to be private pay for about two years. Wow. And mm -hmm. so it's diff more and more difficult to place these people yeah. Um, yeah. that don't have any money. But there are, there are some places, mm -hmm. and I work with some facilities that mm -hmm. I can big and uh -huh. because they know me uh -huh. they'll take my clients yeah. so yeah. yeah but it and we're keeping people alive yeah more and more Longer. of us yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so if somebody was going to look into getting some help with their services whether that was power of attorney or maybe they just need help with their checkbook or what have you how would they go about finding somebody that's reliable. I've already given you my housekeeping seal of approval, but I know there's others in the community and there are what others. kind of questions should they be asking and, and looking at? Well, I can tell you the first question I always get is what do you charge? Uh -huh. You know, so I have a, a fee schedule and uh -huh. I charge different fees for different things. And they also, um, I think it's important to look up these people to find out what their reputation is. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, just as with any other kind of business, there are some people who are not as reliable as others. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to ask around. Mm -hmm. um, you can call Adult Protective Services uh -huh. and ask them who they would refer to. Oh. Um, a uh -huh. lot of attorneys, uh -huh. senior services, services knows who to refer uh -huh. to. The Area Agency on Aging. Area Agency yeah. on Aging. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Good. So those are the best ways. Okay. Yeah. Well, Michelle, thank you so much You're very for coming welcome. in. You gave us a lot of great information. And um, next time I have you back, maybe we can talk about Wrinkles of Washington. We at can. Some point. <laughs> We've got a show coming up. That's so right. we need we'll to, to talk come about back. it. That's going to be coming yes. up this, later this spring. June 1st. That's right. Yes. June is busting out all over. It, it will be. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Eileen, for inviting you me. Bet. I appreciate it. And thanks for all the good that you do in our community, not just in your business, but with Senior Action Network. And um, I know you're on the board of the Washington Center for Performing I am. Arts. You're I just am. Yeah. A very active community member. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, please stay with us. We're going to be back in just a moment because we have some really wonderful people for you to meet and a new program available in town that you're going to want to get in on. So please stay with us.
been watching South Sound Seniors, a look at the people, places, and events that impact our growing senior community here in the South Sound region. Our program is presented as a community service to inform and involve you and yours in the lives of older adults. Our program came to you through the facilities of Thurston Community Television in Olympia, Washington. We invite your comments.